Okay, so we're currently in the Aura Good Cat. It is Sunday. So yesterday we had a chance to um, charge it at my future in-law's place because there's a tree pin plug there. Hey guys, so I'm with the Aura Good Cat right now. It is 7.25 and I'm left with 173 km range and I'm going to be plugging in to a 3 pin point plug um, and later when I leave I'm going to check how much it has charged and the amount of time that it takes to charge that amount of range, I guess. So I have this, the adapter because this is the, oh, maybe. This is the China 3 pin plug. Ta da! It's charging. Does anything happen inside? EV charger connected. On the charger, it shows that it's charging as well. Fault. So power charging, and in the middle, it says fault right here. Later, when we leave, we're just gonna see how much it has charged and how long it takes to charge. We'll be here for about two to three hours. So let's see. It is 11.27 now, I think it has been 7, 8, 9, 10, about 2 to 3 hours. The current mileage that I have remaining is 233 km. So that's and because at this current time, I only have the 3 pin plug and struggles of living in a condo is that there's no 3 pin plug around. Um, there's only one wall box which is always taken by an X5 and the X5 has this cable. Now I'm not sure what this cable um, is called but I do not have it in the Aura Good Cat. So we have decided to go out and charge the car which is also good for me because I'm a person who likes to stay at home so this car actually forces me to go out and be sociable. Having said that, I needed to do a little bit of research upon where to go, where provides charging, where has the wall box with the cable so I can charge straight. And shout out to Autobus because this article came in handy and we're currently on our way to Jaya 1 to test it out, whether the information is correct and whether it's as easy as people say it is to own an EV in Malaysia or whether it's actually pretty difficult. So yeah, right now I have 177 km range left. I don't have any anxiety whatsoever currently. I've been driving around with, or we've been driving around with 200 over km. So we feel quite okay. It's like 100-ish and we charge a bit. Then it's like 230 and we're like, ah. So no range anxiety at the moment. We're not trying to conserve any battery or whatsoever. We're just using it like normal. It's important that we have full charge by tomorrow because tomorrow we're doing a mini meet for those who are interested to see the Aura Good Cat from the Drop the Top community. So yeah, let's go. We are currently in Jaya 1 looking for... Ooh, charging station this way. Oh shit, I, I missed it. I think the good thing about um, having an EV car and having places to charge is that you always kind of have reserved parking for now. And we found the EV charging station. However, this is only the 3 pin plug one. I'm actually looking for the wall mounted one. And in the app, it actually tells you whether it's a wall mount one or a 3 pin plug one or a type 2 one. Uh, so you just have to be very careful on the details in the app because there are quite a bit of uh, ads here and there which might mislead you. So yeah, right now I'll just have to do with the 3 pin one and then maybe later on, depending on the next place we go, we will look for a type 2 one. So the thing about this right, like right now it is charging, I just plugged it into charge, it just tell me like time to full, but it doesn't tell me like the available range at this point of time, it just tells me my mileage, and it would be good if I could see like, oh, I'm at let's say 170km and it's charging and then it just goes up. You know, like your battery charger on your phone, 78%, 79%, 80%, that kind of thing. But in order for me to have that number, I have to like start the car. So I just started the car and it says that I have 153km. It's currently charging. And only when the car is started that it will continue to let me know like, okay, 153, 154. So right now it is 1.25 p.m. at 153 km and later when you come back let's see how much it has charged fully to.
Okay, we're back. PSA, if you're not gonna charge your car, please not park it at an EV charging station where people might need to use this, okay? It's not nice. It's not nice. So this is something that we struggle with. Pulling it out. Okay, we figure it out. The stupid ones, us. So this is like theft prevention, whereby if you plug it in and then you lock the car, then it's quite difficult to pull it out with the car locked. You have to unlock the car first, and then it's very easy to plug up the charger. So, <laughs> lesson learned. Things you know about BV. Yeah. Now it is 2.28 p.m. and uh, we are at 174. That's not much. Lah. Because I am the worst Asian in math, I'm going to divert it to... <laughs> you were saying love, but... Mr. Math! Mr. Math! Uh, it's just like, it was just an, about an hour over. Yeah. Hmm. We got like 20 km. Mm -hmm. Not much, but at least it's like 1 litre, 1.5 litre of petrol. How do you come to that conclusion? Uh, most cars are like 12 to 15 kilometers per litre. Mm -hmm. Then this is like 20 kilometers again. So roughly 1 litre plus for free from Jaya one. But, but okay. it's offset by like parking costs as well. Right. So we just met our friends and uh, because we didn't manage to get a Type 2 charger just now, we are on the search for a Type 2 charger right now. Uh, on, according to the ad, there is one here in Paradigm. So we are currently in Paradigm Mall looking for the place to charge. Okay, we found it. So actually on the app, it's also pretty useful because they tell you like it's at B level B1, C21 pillar, and we found it. So it says here, charge your electric vehicle, plug cable, tap card on charge. So I need to scan this. So I have to go through all this first. Okay. Also, I have limit of four hours. Okay, let's do this. There are really quite a few apps to download. Don't really like having to download so many apps. Adding my card number. Going around in the EV car. I have two EV apps on my phone just like that. Yay! Start charging. Initiating charging. Plug in charging cable. Let's go! Okay, it says here it's charging in progress. Look at that. And uh, when I come back later, it will look something like this. It is 165 km left on the range and it is 4.53 at the moment. See you in a bit. So right now in Paradigm Mall, I go noodle, basically we are just buying time because we are waiting for the car to charge. I guess that is the downside of not having a place to charge in your condo and you need to use the car for the next day. So yeah, we're just waiting here and buying time and just kai kai. It would be nice if there's an app where I could see how much my battery for the Aura Good Care has been charged already so that I know like, okay, I guess I can go now. But right now, all the app is showing is this. Maybe after a while of owning an EV, if I ever do own an EV, then you understand the terminology and the specifications a little bit more. At this point of time, I'm just like, I don't understand this. And I don't know how much has been charged. So, yeah. We are back because I'm very tired. I'm not feeling so well, so. is 633 right now oh my god it's only 190 kilometers oh my god <sighs> okay so just now i tried to unplug it and then plug it back and then it says like charge completed and then i pull it out to charge again and it charged but i paid for the charging when i could have gotten it free so i don't understand i don't understand so we did the calculations and 
we gained about 25 km and we paid 7 ringgit 50 cent. So taking the average fuel efficiency, like really just reading articles and getting the average, I am assuming one liter of petrol, which is at going at two ringgit at 10 km, meaning that 25 km of petrol is five ringgit. But I paid 750 for 25 km. So it seems that electricity is more expensive than petrol. But then again, this for sustainability purposes, right? Is it supposed to be cheaper than petrol consumption or was petrol consumption all along supposed to be cheaper? Which one was it? My perception is that it is supposed to be more friendly for the environment. Whether it would be cheaper or not is another discussion but maintenance wise it seems to be cheaper for now that is the calculations at this point of time good morning <coughs> so we are up now it's close to seven <sighs> because we have a meet at 8 30 p.m and we need to charge the aura good cat the struggle is real we do not have any charging ports at home because it's a condo um, so we went and searched on the app to see where we could do fast charging and decided to go out in the morning and schedule time just before our meet so that we could get this to hopefully 200-300 km range yeah I guess it's true living with an EV you have to schedule your time more properly than having a petrol car because with a petrol car you can just go to a petrol station and be like oh fill up and that's it but with an EV you have to really plan it ahead oh yeah oh good boy okay so I downloaded yet another app and I don't know why when I signed up for this app look at how many times it charged 50 ringgit to my credit card so it has charged 200 ringgit to my credit card and I don't know why uh, and then the next thing is to show you now it's 718 and at 162 km range so let's see how long it takes to charge and how much it can charge to raining so apparently I can select my card or use the app charge core it's 7.36 and we are at 251 km yeah if I were to reflect at this point of time my only advice is to only go and charge your car at fast charges that's it like don't even bother with all the other charges like if you go to a mall and you want to charge then fine only if you want to go to the mall but if not then just aim for all the fast charges that's that's it okay so we just finished charging we are at all three So that's the end of my adventures with Aura Good Cat. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts about owning an EV car and what you thought of the Aura Good Cat and of the video. Catch you guys next time. Bye!